morning, church. We're going to jump into some worship. I invite you guys to stand up and leave your seats.
You took all our shit. 
Praise the Lord. You know, before we go to the Lord in prayer, I want to read a passage from Scripture that a dear brother texted to me this morning, Ray Carricker. God bless you, friend. There's a lot of talk in the world about verses in the Bible, chapter 4, verse 8, coinciding with April 8th. Can I give you a scripture this morning to encourage you? Philippians 4.8. I live by something called the 4.8 principle. And every morning my phone alerts me and I ask myself 4.8 questions based on Philippians 4.8. Are you familiar with it? You should have it memorized. Finally, brethren and sisteren, is that a word? Whatever things are true, whatever things are noble, whatever things are just, whatever things are pure, Whatever things are lovely, whatever things are of good report. If there is any virtue and if there is anything praiseworthy, meditate on these things. We need to get into the Word and let the Word get in us. I was counseling at the local coffee shop with a young man in the community this week, and he's struggling with his faith. And this young man of 21 years of age, he's just saying, I'm having a really hard time getting into the Bible. I said, well, you got to get into the Bible and let the Bible get into you. And I showed him my phone. I said, it's so easy to set up a reading plan on your phone. I showed him my, my screen, my, my opening screen on my phone, and there I have the Bible app. Now, admittedly, Facebook is right next to it, but I have my Bible app first because daily I want to check God's book before I check Facebook. Amen? Amen. And you know what? I think it would do a lot of us a lot of good if we just simply, I work in social media. <laughs> I'm on it all the time, but sometimes it's good to take a social media fast and get away from a lot of the stuff that you're going to see because it doesn't line up with Philippians 4.8. And this passage also coincides with this song, Worthy is the Lamb. Let's keep our eyes on Jesus, not on what the world is telling us, not what media is telling us, not what TikTok is telling us. Let's focus on the word because the word says it will go well with the righteous. Amen. Come what may, we may endure suffering. Suffering lasts for a season, right? But joy comes in the morning. Amen. God's got this and we don't have to fret. We don't have to worry. We can have full confidence that God's going to take care of you, me, and those that you love. Amen. Amen. Father, we thank you for this morning. We thank you, God, that you have not given us a spirit of fear, but of love, power, and a sound mind. And today we recommit ourselves to the 4-8 principle located in Philippians 4-8. God, you've given us a blueprint. There's so many things in this world that we have zero control over, but the one thing that you have given us control over is what we choose to dwell on and to meditate on. And today we choose to meditate upon you and your goodness and all that you have for us. God, your promises are true. And Lord, we stand on those promises today. We thank you, Father, for those that are sick today, such as my wife. Boy, poor thing, can't catch a break. Father, I pray, Lord, that you would heal her and raise her up. Remove the fever from her body. Lord, I pray that you would give her the strength that she needs. Lord, for everyone who's watching on the live stream who is feeling under the weather, we pray for healing and wholeness in their life today as well. For those that are recovering from surgeries, those that are battling cancer, those that are facing almost impossible situations, Father, you know the needs in our congregation. We lay them at the foot of the cross and we walk away from them thanking you and praising you, knowing, Father, that you're going to work all things out for our benefit because we put you first, Lord. Lord, we plead the blood of Jesus over the needs of our church, over our congregation. Father, over our loved ones, the prodigals, we pray that they would come home. Father, even today in the service, we pray that someone who may be away from Christ would come home and find the Lord as Savior today. Father, we just glorify you. We lift you up. We will not fret. We will not worry. Father, you commanded us in your word not to worry and not to live in fear. Fear not. So many times in your word, 
God, we will stand upon that. And we know that you're going to work all things out for your glory because we love you. We thank you for this time of worship. We thank you, Lord, for our church. Now open up the ears, Lord, uh, of our heart today. Open the eyes of our heart to receive the word of God. And Lord, may it not just be a seed, but may it grow and blossom and come to fruition in our lives. Lord, you have a mandate for us to go and to preach the gospel to every creature, making disciples. Help us to do just that this week, Lord. We pray these things in Jesus' name and all God's people said, amen. Yeah, can we give God a hand clap one more time? One more time. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Well, before you're seated, there's some amazing people all around you. Why don't you take a moment, put a hug on somebody's neck. Would you do that? Good morning, church. Praise the Lord. Good to see all of you. As you all are making your way back to your seats, let me welcome those that are watching online. There's several of you. I believe some even from overseas in Spain. I believe the Gallegoses are watching this morning, and so we say hello to you. Glad you're joining us. If you are new on the live stream, drop us a comment in the chat. We'd love to connect with you there. Praise God for technology, am I right? Amen. Amen. And it's great to see a nice crowd the week after Easter. Welcome to Easter 2.0. And we want you to come back next Sunday for Easter 2.3 or 3.0. 3.0. There you go. Every day, every day is Easter for the believer. Amen. Resurrection Sunday. Well, listen, I do see some new faces, and if you are new to our family, we welcome you. There's a bright orange Connect card located right in front of you. Pull that out, fill out your information, or scan that QR code, and you can do it on your phone. But we just want to connect with you, and then also we want to tell you that we have a gift waiting for you at our exit. We have a guest table. You can't miss it, and we hope you'll pick up one of those bags and take it home. But we just want to welcome all of you that have found AGF, and we pray that you feel right at home, welcome to feel God's love and warmth, uh, not only from the Lord. Lord, but also from his people. We're so glad that you are here. Amen? Amen. All right, here we go. We are so excited that all this month on Monday nights at 6.30 p.m. in this auditorium, we will be previewing uh, season four of The Chosen, episodes one through four. And I know a lot of you are fired up about this. What an opportunity for you to invite family, friends, coworkers, classmates to come and experience the first four episodes of The Chosen, season four. Hey, to whet your appetite for what you're about to see, we're going to check out the trailer. Will you allow us to do that this morning? Yeah, check this out. Darkness is not the absence of light. It is more uncontrollable and sinister. You were there. Waiting. Because the darkness is not dark to you. At least, not always. The coming darkness was too deep for us to grasp. It would appear that we now want the same thing as Pilate. Senior leaders in every district should question and expose Jesus. I just can't stop seeing how we could be doing things faster and more efficiently. You deserve a stipend for your specialized work. You can at least make sure that you have resources to keep the mission going. My ledgers are in the red. I told you to make life difficult for the followers of Jesus. It is on this rock that I will build my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. This infernal chaos. Why can no one control these people? What just happened to all of you? It's about to get worse. Now that I'm here, physical death does not interrupt our eternal life. Lazarus! Come out! I remember you wishing there could be another way. And looking back, I do too. I still don't know why it has to be this way. 
the bitter often mingled with the sweet. You told us it would be like that, with how you lived. The man of sorrows, acquainted with grief. Amen. Special thanks to uh, Rick and Becky for hosting. Also, Joe and Diane Martinez will be involved. Thank you for hosting this. Again, what an opportunity. I believe we have flyers that you received this morning. If not, there should be some in the foyer. Take some flyers and invite some people that would enjoy this. Amen. And uh, people, especially your unlo unsaved loved ones and friends and family, they would love to be a part of this. And thank you, Miss Jeanette, for making this happen behind the scenes. Yeah, you're the one that lined it all up. So we appreciate that very, very much. Thank you. Carol Ortiz, wave at us. There's Carol in the back. You know her, you love her. She's uh, inviting you to join her on Friday mornings at 9 a.m. to help spruce up our memorial garden. How many of you all know that it won't be long until that uh, memorial garden is just overflowing with beautiful flowers? But it takes a small workforce to make that happen. And so if you have a green thumb, don't look at me. I got a brown thumb. The thing I touch dies, but uh, if, if, if that's something that you enjoy, join us here Fridays at 9 a.m. in the Memorial Garden right outside the entry doors here, and just help us to get it ready for, uh, for the growing season. Amen? Amen. For our full schedule, be sure to go to our website and utilize our social media handles at AGFPW. Lots of stuff happening throughout the week. Ron wanted me to remind you Truth Seekers is back tomorrow. Uh, of course, Tuesday night prayer, midweek study. Uh, Thursday morning men's group, Thursday evening youth group for our students. Come on, somebody, right? Uh, Kids Zone is happening underneath our feet as we speak. And tonight, young adults, 5 p.m., diving into the book of 2 Corinthians tonight. Can I also make one more announcement, Pastor, before you come? Young adults, next Sunday, we're going to go to Mount Princeton Hot Springs. Come on, somebody. I call it the Holy Ghost hot tub, right? <laughs> comes from the goodness of God's earth. Amen. $45. We are able to take the church van if there's enough of us. We're going to stop for dinner on, in Salida on the way home. Adults only. We're asking no children, please. But if, again, if you're in that 20s and 30s uh, age range, and maybe you're not connected with our young adults, can I throw uh, an extension, an invitation for you to come and be a part of our dynamic young adults group? We're growing by leaps and bounds in God's Word, and we're having a lot of fun together, as you can see. We want to invite you, if you're in that 20s and 30s age, come and be a part of what God's doing. But we'll be meeting tonight, 5 p.m. in our lower level. We hope to see you. Hey, listen, tithes and offerings, thank you for your faithfulness to the Lord's work and allowing us to keep this train on the track week in and week out. As you know, four ways to give. Thank you for your faithfulness. May God bless you as you're able to give. Pastor. Thank you. Good morning, everybody. I love you. God loves you. And uh, what a delight to be back in the pulpit. It is Easter every day, and I rejoice. I serve a risen Savior. <laughs> Can someone say amen? amen? And he's in the world today, and he's drawn all men unto himself. I want to say a big thank you to this generous church. Last week, uh, nearly $4,000, let's celebrate, was given in our one-day offering to help feed the poor and suffering children around the world. I want to say thank you, thank you, thank you. Throughout the month of April, if you have a, a prompting in your heart that you still want to give and you have not give, there are one-day envelopes on the uh, drop box in the back. And again, His one day transforms our every day. And now we realize we're blessed to be a blessing. Now your one day's wage can transform their every day. And with this sacrifice, God's well pleased. So I want to just say thank you so much. If you're writing out a check, you write it out payable to AGF. And then we'll see at the end of April that the entire funds received will go to be a blessing to the poor peoples of the earth, especially the children. I do want to say, uh, Pastor Rob, that outing looks great. I would love to go. I'm 62, so I know we're disqualified. I know I look 39, but I'm 62. But at any rate, um, 
my wife and I will be taking a two-week vacation beginning tomorrow, and so we'll cover your prayers as we travel to see family, and then we uh, will be back uh, in the pulpit not until the last Sunday of this month. Ron will be preaching next Sunday. His heart, his cup is full. Pastor Rob will be preaching National Youth Sunday on the 21st. We'll be talking about our great youth ministry and what God's doing there through our leaders. In fact, I understand they're studying the book of Revelation now, and that's amazing. And uh, there's just that, that uh, curiosity living in today's world that we're living in the time of the end. And so that's great that our kids are, uh, are studying and then um, we will also be traveling uh, to attend our district council uh, near the end of the month in Salt Lake City uh, for four days. So would you just keep us in prayer? We're so ready for a time of rest and relaxation. And uh, we're thankful to God for you, the church, always standing by our side. Awakening 2024 is the theme for this year, and it's been resonating in my heart since the end of 2023. When I preached the last Sunday of 2023, I asked the question, what will 2024 bring forth? Will it be a year of prosperity or will it be a year of persecution? No man knows, but I'm prepared for both. Jesus said, if the world hated me, They'll hate you as well. If they persecuted me, they'll persecute you as well. But I do also know that our God is a God of prosperity and blessing. And so, either way, I know God is with us. Amen. Our theme verse is found in Romans 13, verse 11. And our tagline for this Awakening 2024 is, Now is the time. And it comes from this verse, the Bible says in Romans 13, 11, and do this knowing the time. Do we really understand today and know the time in which we're living? Knowing the time that now it is high time to awake out of sleep. I do not want to be a part of a church that's asleep. I want to be a part of the church that is on fire, hot for Christ, that is not lost its first love. You could just read about this in, in Revelations 2 and 3 when Jesus walks in the midst of the churches and He encourages us to, 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 to be abiding in Him and to be true to Him. That's who we want to be. So we want to awake out of sleep, for now our salvation is nearer than when we first believed. Paul writes, the night is far spent, and the day is at hand. The day of the Lord is at hand. If he wrote that nearly 2,000 years ago, how much more is the day at hand? What expectation did you awake with this morning? I don't know if anybody has a birthday today, April 7th, 2024, by chance. Anybody? Well, that's always a great day. If you want to take notes, my birthday is July 20th, <laughs> 1962. I'll look forward to that day should he tarry. Or anniversary. Anybody have an anniversary today, April 7th, 2024? Um, our anniversary is on summer solstice, June 21st, 1986, and that was another great day. And we continue to celebrate the nearly 38 years that the Lord has given us and blessed us with. Maybe you'll wake up uh, to the day when you get to uh, go away on a much-needed vacation. Hence, tomorrow, what a blessed day. Or the day of retirement. I've had some invitations to attend retirement parties because it's the day we celebrate uh, the year or the day of your retirement. Or the, 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 uh, the birth of a child. You know, we, we look forward to celebrating with our children. But how about the expectation of the second coming of Christ? That's what I want to preach to you on this morning with God's help. 
The second coming of Christ. We are living in the last days. Jesus is coming soon. Would we all agree? Now, I have a disclaimer that I want to share with you. First of all, I'm no eschatologist, but I do love the study of eschatology, of future things. I will tell you today that there are scholars that have devoted their lifetime to the study of future things. And for that, I'm thankful for the Bible study helps that I have and the graphs and the charts to help me understand the times in which we're living. But as I come to the pulpit today, I wonder how in the world can I preach to you about the second coming of Christ in 40 minutes? I'm a little perplexed, to be quite frank with you. But with God's help, I'm going to attempt to unload what the Spirit of God has poured out in my heart during this past week and really during these past years. I will tell you that God's fulfillment of prophetic events is occurring more frequently and with increasing intensity, especially since the rebirth of the nation of Israel in May of 1948. Was anybody alive in 1948? Let me see your hands real high. Wow. That's amazing. You've seen a lot. Matthew 24, verse 3 and 7, now as Jesus sat on the Mount of Olives, the disciples came to Him privately saying, tell us when these things will be and what will be the sign of your coming and of the end of the age? That's the big question of the disciples to Jesus. Jesus would respond, there would be wars and rumors of wars. There'd be nations rising against nations. There'll be famines, pestilences, and earthquakes in various places. Can I just share with you that just this past Wednesday, a 7.4 magnitude earthquake rocked Taiwan, leaving at least nine people dead, nearly 1,000 injured, and hundreds of others trapped. There's the pictures. This is just this week. Taiwan's worst quake in 25 years. Can you imagine if you're living in Denver, Colorado, and you see something like this? But they're happening in rapid succession. On Friday, this past Friday, a 4.8 magnitude earthquake was the strongest to hit, get this, New Jersey, in nearly 250 years, according to the geological survey. Could the big one about to happen, perhaps on the East Coast in New York? Could it potentially happen on the West Coast in California? It wouldn't phase me if we hear of this. But I can tell you that the peoples on the East Coast are shaking in their boots. And I probably would be too. But then we're reminded, but God has not given us the spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. There'll be wars and rumors of wars. According to Jesus, a nation will be rising against nation. October 7th, 2023 will go down as a day in history that forever marred my soul. The Israel... Hamas war. I believe we're in day 177, if I'm not mistaken, today. A surprise attack from hell itself, from Hamas. In the Greek, do you know that word actually means violence? Upon Israel that killed over 1,200 innocent civilians with over 250 taken as hostages. 
The axis of evil from Iran, Iraq, and North Korea seeks the total annihilation of the Jewish people. But it's not happening. Because Israel is the apple of God's eye. And God fights for Israel. And against all odds, we know the end of the story. The Bible tells us, and there's our Israeli flag, to pray for the peace of Jerusalem. May they prosper that love thee. And since this church was birthed 25 years ago, this church has prayed earnestly for the peace of Jerusalem. Nayala, we love you. We love your family living in Nazareth, Israel. Our church founders... And today, Israel is on high, high, high alert because of her enemies. On your way out, we have a book from Ray Comfort titled, Volatile. The nations, the Bible says, will attack Israel in the latter days. The Middle East is a stick of dynamite with its lit fuse. For more than 75 years, peace negotiations have repeatedly failed to Defuse it. It's not about a two-state solution. Their anti-Semitic chant is from the river to the sea. But it ain't happening. Because we know the end of the story. Amazingly, 2,500 years ago, the Bible predicted that very fact. It also identified by name the nations that would attack Israel in the last days. The fact that these prophecies are so specific and that this is all being played out, listen to this, before our eyes in the Middle East is the reason we should give the Bible a second look. So on your way out, thank you to the um, families, that uh, the Pacheco family that, that, that made these books available. On your way out, please pick up a copy and I think you will be interested in its reading. In the news, just this week, you read about the surprise attack of Israel on Damascus, Syria. And uh, there's the picture next to the Iranian embassy. Uh, two of their key generals were taken and all those that were in that building perished. And now there is a warning, not only to Israel, but even to the nation of America, as we speak, that there may be an attack on the way. Wars and rumors of wars... Uh, my wife and I, as we were driving in, she said she just heard about these uh, drones. What do we call them? Suicide drones. That uh, Iran has uh, a number of that are capable of flying uh, thousands of miles that carry 500, 600 pounds of heavy explosives. I mean, you know what I begin to think? I begin to think... As this attack just happened in, in, in Damascus, I begin to think about the prophecy of Isaiah in 17 verse 1. I don't know if I put that verse here, but the Bible says, The burden against Damascus, behold, Damascus will cease from being a city, and it will be a ruinous heap. Now this is the Bible. This will happen. This city now has a population of over two million people. Imagine Denver, the city of Denver being a, a ruinous heap. When you talk about all the counties that surround Denver, from Castle Rock on up to Longmont and from Boulder on east, you, you're talking about three million people. But this just makes me think that, 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 that we're living in the time of the end. Undoubtedly. What more could be said about the third temple, the Temple Institute in Jerusalem says all is set for the temple to be rebuilt, including the priestly garments and the priests ready for duty. You've heard about the red heifer 
in Israel, the red heifer sacrifice in Israel, ready to be offered, perhaps even as soon as this month. And then there's the eclipse of April 8th, 2024. Now, I'm not a conspiracy theorist, but this video sure has me thinking His coming is ever more imminent. I want you to just turn your attention to the screen. Place seven years ago, went right across America. There's another eclipse coming right across America. It'll make a perfect cross on the center of the nation. God made the first sign go through seven cities named Salem on August 21st, 2017. The word Salem, according to Bible, is peace. So God is saying seven times he offered peace. The next eclipse is coming. It goes through several cities here, particularly Nineveh. Nineveh, 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 Nineveh. So first we have seven cities called Salem, and now seven cities called Nineveh. Seven and seven. Seven cities called Salem, seven cities called Nineveh, and seven years apart. Right in the center of the cross is a city called Rapture. What is God's message? He's coming very, very soon. In the path of totality, there you see in the red the, uh, the eclipse of tomorrow. I understand that airlines will be busy and are busy today uh, because people are flying to see in their lifetime this eclipse. Now, in the book of Genesis, the Bible speaks about, um, I believe it's chapter 12, that, that there would be signs in the heavens. And um, you, would, you would see these as, as uh, signs for the appointed seasons. And um, I, I, I just want to say that, that it's important for us to, to recognize the sign of the times. I um, still remember... Uh, it was in 2017, uh, I was on the AGF parking lot. I don't know who s snapped this picture, if it was my wife or Pastor Rob, but there I was checking out the eclipse. I knew I had it on my phone, and I just went to my phone, and I found out the date. And sure enough, that was the date. That's the date of that eclipse that I was watching. And then there was an eclipse in... Uh, 2023, I remember we were coming out of eating breakfast um, at, uh, at uh, what's that place? <laughs> By the, the pantry. And uh, there were people lined outside to get their goodies at the bakery, banquet bakery. And they were looking up. There were people that had glasses. And I said, oh, can I borrow your glasses? But if you go to the next slide, I think it might show you... Um, well, well there, there's, there's the rapture, Indiana, but right here on the bottom, you see it was October 14th, 2023. I just remember uh, on that day being able to put on the glasses and see the, the eclipse. These are, all, these are all signs, my friends, from God. But then what really struck me is that where these two cross seven years apart and seven is the year of completion you see that there's a little unincorporated city called rapture indiana the only name of the city in all the globe and i don't think it has a very large population i don't know if there's even but maybe a a, a few that are, are are living there but look it up and see for yourself and we're going to talk about the rapture in, in just a moment. I think a picture of Pastor Mark looking up is just uh, a, a, a message for you. Jesus said, when you see these signs begin to appear, come on, say it real loud. Look up because your redemption's drawing near. Now I wonder how many of us are really looking up. Go to the next slide, if you would. 
the second coming of Christ, I want to preach to you as, as clearly as I can about the coming, the second coming of Jesus Christ. Oh, before I do, let me mention this. The sign of Jonah. You're studying that. I think even in Ron's class in Luke 17, if I'm not mistaken. But here, the sign of Jonah refers not just to the mysterious sign of Jonah in the belly of the whale, but it's a sign, watch this, of repentance, which Jonah preached to the people and in which the wicked people of Nineveh repented. Remember, Jonah ran from the presence of God, swallowed by a whale, but the word of the Lord came to Jonah a second time. Can I just remind us that God loves people more than anything? He sent His Son in the world to die for sinners, such as the Ninevites. And they would put ISIS to shame when you talk about the brutality and then the inhumane acts that they took on. What is God telling America as we look at the pathway of these two eclipses seven years apart? I think He's telling us, repent while you still have time. But the second coming, the second coming of Christ, the the, the, the two phases of the second coming is as the rapture and as the return. Now, it says in Hebrews 9.28, to those who eagerly look for Him. Again, are you looking up? Are you looking for the Savior? He will appear, the Scripture says, a second time apart from sin for salvation. Just as the Scripture predicted two aspects of Christ's first coming, speaking of His birth in Bethlehem, for unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, and the government will be upon His shoulders. It also spoke of the suffering servant in Isaiah 53, where He would be wounded for our transgressions. He would be bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon Him. And by His stripes, thank God, we are healed. Well, the second coming also, we see it in light of two phases. The rapture and the return. Let's talk real quickly about the rapture. Only those looking for Him shall see Him. And so I would pray that every day when you wake up out of bed, that you could pray the prayer of John the Revelator, even so, come Lord Jesus. He's coming. Again soon. His coming is imminent. Meaning it could happen in any moment. And I would pray that God would help us to live with this in view of what the Scriptures declare. In this first phase, our Lord comes to take His own, both the living and the dead, to be with Him. The church's future blessed hope is the rapture. It says in Titus 3.13, I believe, that we are to look for the blessed hope and the glorious appearing of our great God and Savior, Jesus Christ. Christ. You see, we the church await the Savior who is coming for His bride. In John 14, verse 2 and 3, Jesus is with His disciples just before He's to go to the cross. And He tells them this, and I believe He speaks this to us today as well. Do not let your heart be troubled about all that's happening in the world today. You believe in God, believe also in Me. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you, I go to prepare a place for my bride. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you to myself, that where I am, there you may be also. 
He is coming again. If he said it, he meant it, and it will happen. At his ascension, two men dressed in white apparel stood and spoke to those who were with him as he was taken up from them. He blessed them. And they said, you men of Galilee, why stand ye here gazing up into the sky? This same Jesus, which is taken up from among you, shall so come in like manner as you've seen him go. And so we come to that blessed rapture verse. Paul writes in 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 16 and 17. He explains it this way. Now this has yet to happen. This is a book of prophecy. This event has yet to take place. For the Lord himself will descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of an archangel and with the trumpet of God, and the dead in Christ will rise first. Then we who are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. It sounds like a blessed reunion coming, coming soon. I love my mama. I love my daddy. And I've, uh, in fact, April 15th will be 10 years, income tax day, that my dad passed. And do you know, on the day that my dad passed, April 15th, 2014, there was a blood moon. We came home from Denver. Drove out. Pastor Rob, you might have been with us. There was a group of people out by the reservoir at Liberty Point. And there we saw the blood moon. But I'm looking forward to that day when I'll be reunited with mom and dad in the clouds. The Bible says, and thus we shall always be with the Lord. Therefore, what? Comfort one another with these words. Now, the word rapture is not actually in the Bible. But it says, then we who are alive and remain shall be caught up. The Greek word is the word harpazo, and it means to be caught up or to be snatched away. Remember what the writer Paul wrote in that great hope chapter, resurrection chapter, 1 Corinthians 15, 51. We shall not all sleep or die, but we shall be changed, what? In a moment. In the twinkling of an eye. Twinkle your eyes real quick. Just that quick. As a thief in the night. That's why we need to cast aside the works of the darkness. That's why we need to put on the armor of light. That's why we need to put on the Lord Jesus Christ and make no provision for the flesh as we are living in these last days. Do you understand what your pastor's preaching this morning? Paul would write to the Thessalonians a second letter to clarify that they were not left behind and that the Holy Spirit and the church are now that restrainer. I just want to share this from the Geneva Bible. The Bible says, Let no man deceive you, 2 Thessalonians 2, 3, by any means, for that day shall not come except there come a departing first, and that that man of sin be disclosed, even the son of perdition, speaking of the Antichrist. The first seven English translations of that word, a departing first, is apostasia, meaning apostasy or a falling away. But they are as follows. The Wycliffe Bible, the Tyndale Bible, the Coverdale Bible, the Cranmer Bible, the Breaches Bible, the Beza Bible, and the Geneva Bible all interpret that word as a departure. And then the Antichrist will be Revealed. In fact, Jerome's Latin translation known as the Vulgate from around the time A.D. 400 renders apostasia with the word decessio, meaning departure. I'm convinced that we're standing at the brink of hearing that shofar blast from heaven for Jesus to come and take His bride away. The seven-year tribulation comes between the rapture 
and the return. Thus, we believe in a pre-tribulation rapture. Now, currently, we're living, you are here in red. We are the present church age since the day of Pentecost and the birth of the church until the times of the Gentiles be fulfilled. We are living in the church age. Thank God for the Holy Spirit. He's not left us as orphans. He's given us another helper to help us live with the cutting edge. Making a difference in our world. Now is the time. Now is the accepted time to receive Jesus. Now is the time for the church to preach this gospel. That Christ has died. Christ has risen. Christ will come again. Come on church. Wake up. Wake up. But when the rapture of the church will happen, no man knows the day or the hour except the Father. But I tell you, and I've been telling you for a long time, I think we're this close. And I want to encourage you to be ready. I call it the pre-tribulation rapture. Notice 1 Thessalonians 1.10 We are to wait for His Son from heaven whom He raised from the dead, even Jesus, who delivers us from the wrath to come. You don't want to be here during the seven-year tribulation. You want to go up. You want to be snatched away because you're ready and you're abiding in Him and you're confident at His appearing because you talk about wrath... It says in 1 Thessalonians 5, 9, For God did not appoint us to wrath, but to obtain salvation through our Lord Jesus Christ, who died for us, that whether we die or are awake, we should live together with Him. Therefore, again, comfort each other and edify one another just as you were so doing. And then to the church in Philadelphia, Revelation 3.10 Because you have kept my command to persevere, I also will keep you from the hour of trial which shall come upon the whole world to test those who dwell on the earth. Behold, I am coming quickly. Seven year tribulation. The wrath of God poured out on all unrighteousness and ungodliness. Things going on in the world right now are bad. But compared to the coming seven year tribulation period, it will make what's happening now look like a Sunday school picnic. That I as a teacher of fifth graders, as a young man, would have for my fifth grade class. And I was so saddened. Just about eight days ago to get a knock on our door during Holy Week from a dear brother, Joe O'Brien, to tell me that his son, Ellen O'Brien, passed away. He was one of my fifth grade students in Sunday school. He came to the park to have pizza with me. He came to my house with the other fifth grade class to just celebrate as I was building disciples. I remember going to Israel in 1984 and bringing back bookmarks from Israel for every one of my fifth grade students. You won't want to be here. If you read Revelation chapter 6 through 18, you read about that seven year tribulation period or Daniel's 70th week, the time of Jacob's trouble, where God's attention is now on the nation of Israel. It's a time of calamity our world has never known. Also, notice in the book of Re Revelation, you read of no mention of the church from Revelation 4 3 when John the Revelator. Here's the sound. Come up hither. Speaking of the church. Now in Revelation 2 and 3, he's speaking to the seven churches of Asia Minor. Come on church. Here we've preached two messages this year about not losing your first love and about not being lukewarm. But now, no mention of the church from Revelation 4, 3 through the end of Revelation 18. Why? Because we're with Him. 
while all the wrath of God is being poured out on this earth. Saints in heaven during the seven year tribulation period, we will face the Bema judgment for the good deeds done in our body. According to 1 Corinthians chapter 3. And then we'll be there celebrating the great marriage supper of the Lamb. Mm, and I know AGF's going to enjoy that because AGF knows how to pot luck. <laughs> I included my. The rapture. The rapture. The return. Notice. After seven years, you see the return of Christ. Let me just speak just quickly about the return of Christ. This is where every eye now shall see Him. In the second phase, He returns with His own to win the battle of Armageddon and defeat the enemy. And establish then his kingdom on earth, which is known as the millennial rule or reign of Christ. You read about this in the book of Revelation, chapters 19 and 20. But Revelation 19 11, John writes, Now I saw heaven opened, and behold, a white horse. How many of you ever seen a white horse before? Beautiful. Chana, it's nice to see you. And you tell Troy hello. But a white horse, Chana. Behold, a white horse. Beautiful. Majestic. And he who sat on him was called faithful and true. And in righteousness he judges and makes war. And the armies in heaven, clothed in fine linen, white and clean, Followed him on white horses. Guess who that is? That's you. And that's me. And I saw the beasts, the kings of the earth, and their armies gathered together to make war against him who sat on the horse and against his army. We're speaking about the battle of Armageddon. Then the beast was captured, and with him the false prophet who worked signs in his presence by which he deceived those who received the mark of the beast and those who worshipped his image, these two were cast alive into the lake of fire burning with brimstone. Hallelujah! We know the end of the story. Now let me just tell you real quick, there's a difference between the rapture and the second coming. Believers are a part of both. What does the Bible say? Let me give you some comparisons between the rapture and the glorious appearance of Jesus. In the rapture, Christ comes for His own. According to John 14, I go to prepare a place for you, and if I go, I will come again and receive you to Myself. But in the glorious appearing, Christ now comes with His own, as we just read about in Revelation 9 and verse 14. In the rapture, He comes in the air. It is glorious appearing. He comes on the earth where His foot will then set on Mount of Olives. And there will be a great earthquake. And in Israel, I should have picked, put a picture of here, but last week I did. In Israel, the eastern gate, the golden gate is now closed. Yeah, it's, it's bricked. It's mortared. But on that day, you see, he rode into Jerusalem through that gate. When they were singing shouts of Hosanna, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Well, at his return, we will come with him and he will go through that gate and set up his millennial reign. And we will rule and reign with him forever. In the rapture, he comes to claim his bride. Again, in the return, he comes with his bride. In the rapture, it's for the removal of believers. And then in his return, it's the manifestation of Christ to all. In the rapture, only his own will see him. 
But now, according to Revelation 1-7, in the return, every eye shall see Him and look upon Him in whom they have pierced. In the rapture, the tribulation period thus begins, and then in the return, the millennial kingdom now begins. In the rapture, the saved are delivered from wrath. At His return, the unsaved experience the wrath of God. In the rapture, no signs precede the rapture, but we know in the return, signs precede the second coming. Because the book of Revelation spells it all out. In chapters number 6 through 18. In the rapture, our focus is the Lord and the church. And now, in His return, the focus becomes Israel and His millennial kingdom. In the rapture, the world is deceived But thanks be unto God at His return, Satan is then bound for a thousand years. Then we'll be loosed at the end of the millennium. You remember that as well. But there is just so much, my friends, as we're preaching to you today, that I can't dive into, but I can just tell you as your pastor, my heart longs to share with you Two things. Number one, a big question. And number two, a big challenge. Here's my big question. Are you prepared and ready for Jesus to come or to meet the Lord today? Prepared, ready. Remember the parable of the ten virgins? Five were wise, five were foolish. Oil, God, give me oil in my lamp. My, we need the Holy Spirit as never before. We need to put the, to death the deeds of the flesh through the power of the Spirit. They're contrary to one another. But if we can remain full of the Holy Spirit, it's the will of God that we remain full of the Holy Spirit, that we put on the Lord Jesus Christ and we make ourselves prepared and ready because those that were ready in Matthew 25 went in and the door was Shut. Put on the armor of light. Cast off the evil deeds of darkness, church. And put on the Lord Jesus Christ. Let Him live inside of you. And make no provision for the flesh. Receive Christ before it's too late. Now is the accepted time. According to 2 Corinthians 6, 2. Now is the time to receive this salvation. Let me tell you about the big challenge that I have for all of us. I want to encourage you to watch and pray. That sounds familiar. Jesus in the garden tells His disciples to what? Watch and pray. You know, sadly, when He came back to them as He was in agony, Because he knew of the cup of suffering that he would take on. What did he find? They were asleep. Our text, Awakening 2024, says to awake out of sleep. Now it's high time to awake out of sleep. Don't be asleep. That's what your pastor's telling you today. Do not be asleep. I want to encourage you to watch and pray and to be ready for our Lord's return. Live with eternal values in mind. Set your affections on things above where Christ is seated at the right hand of the throne of God. Not on earthly things. One day to feed the world is all about setting your affection on things above. Maximize your commitment to Jesus Christ. Get in the Word. Pastor Rob, I appreciate what you shared about the the, the devotions that you have and the 4-8 principle that you live by from Philippians chapter 4, verse 8. That's good. What to God that we all live by that 4-8 principle. Maximize our commitment to Christ. Do all we can for the Lord with service to Him and with service to others. The rapture is the most important future prophetic event to be to the believer in Christ. Do you agree with that? And you don't want to be left behind. Does that sound familiar? 
I'm going to ask the team if they can come and I'm going to invite you to stand with me and I'm going to give you two more passages of Scripture that I think will really, really help you. Peter, there will be scoffers in the last day saying, well, where is the promise of His coming? Friends, it will happen. I think sooner than we can even imagine. So Father, now... If there's anybody here that hasn't received Jesus, came into his own and his own received him not, but to as many as received him, it's the gift of God, eternal life. To as many as received him, to them he gave the right to become the children of God. May they receive you now, Lord, in this room or on live stream. Lord Jesus, I admit my need. I believe you are the Savior of the world. I confess that you died for my sins, was buried, rose again the third day. I confess my sins to you now and to you alone. I repent of them. I turn to you now to put on the Lord Jesus Christ and from this day forward to make no provision for the flesh. I'm crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live, yet not I, but Christ lives in me. Jesus, be Jesus in us this week, everywhere we go. And then, Lord, we know that your delay means the salvation of our family members and our loved ones. And right now, will you just lift up your voice for your own loved one? Would you just do that? Lift up their names to God. And let's pray that the Lord will save them. Father, even today, we lift up our family members to you, O oh God. We lift up to you, Jesus. Ryan, and Haley, and Dustin. Lord, we lift up Deidre, and Hillary, and our Jason. We lift up Brooke, and Zach. God, I lift up to you these family members that they would gain that eye of understanding, divine revelation of who this Jesus is. Lord, we lift them up to you and pray that You'd save them from the coming wrath. I thank you for your mercy to us all. I lift up to you my wife, and my mother-in-law, my siblings, Jeanette's siblings, all our nieces and nephews, all our uncles and aunts, all of our cousins, first, second, third, fourth cousins, Lord. You love them all. Then we pray for the open heaven over the city of Pueblo and the county of Pueblo, including Pueblo West. We pray for the big reign of the Spirit as we the church put on the Lord Jesus Christ leaving this place today. God, only you know what news we'll hear this week on CNN or Fox News or Newswatch. But we know, God, we're looking up every morning when we arise out of bed and praying even so. Come, Lord Jesus. And all God's people said, Amen. Amen. AGF, the Lord bless you, keep you, make His face shine upon you, be gracious to you, and give you His shalom. If you need anything, please call us. We're here for you, okay? Let me beat you out the door so I can greet you on your way out.
I should have. I should have three grandkids here at Thursday, so maybe I can get them to come.